Hey, Sneaky Links back today. Today we've got the latest release from Tiny Core, so that's Tiny Core 3.1, not a release calendar date, or a beta. It's the full numbskulls, shall we say. Got my little bar down there. As you can see, I've installed some stuff already. This is not a full install, by the way. I've just got a save file. So anyway, we'll open up this, the control panel. So we've got apps, audit, date and time. Set your TCE drive. Now, if you want to have a little save file, so if you boot up from disk, say, and you want to save all your information, this is what you need to do. Now, I've already done mine, but normally it will give you an option of what drive to save it to. So that's pretty cool. So you can have it going. You don't have to lose everything all the time. Floppy tool, update your apps, backup and restore, all papers, network is pretty cool, mouse tool, USB install. Yes, it will install to USB, so that'd be pretty cool. I've only done that once, I've done that for a long while, so I must do that one soon. So you get three options of doing to a USB stick. So there you go, look. One's an XT, one's a zip, and one's an HDD. And you just choose which one will suit your machine, because as you know, not all machines will boot from USB, which is a bit of a pity, all down to BIOS, as we know. So that's nice, isn't it? Yes, another nice one. It's quite a lot improved from the last version as well. It's not crashed on me at all, even when I've loaded it up. Got your mount tool and a swap file tool. Now I've already made a swap file using Gparted and a, and a main file, so I don't actually need to do that. Exvesa setup. Now to get your correct settings for your monitor, you'll need to do this. Sometimes it'll auto find it, sometimes it won't. So if it doesn't, basically you go down to find your resolution. So I'm going to click N here for next if it's not big enough. Now mine there would be number 23, which is 1080 by 1024, or 1280 by 1024 anyway. And you just put a number in, and it'll do your screen for you. You probably will have to reboot it to get it to run properly, but make sure you do need that save file. You do need it. So yeah, that's okay. Oh, system stats, yeah. As you can see, I've got Google Chrome, oh, sorry, Chromium, not Google Chrome, is here, and it's got quite a bit in its cache there. What else? My CPU, it's a standard test machine. Old dual core, 2 gig. Memory, not using anything. I've got a lovely, lovely swap file, a nice big one. So that's nice. So I can keep going. That's as much as I want to do. Cool. There's a net. Yeah, that's all done. That's all done automatically, by the way, your internet, if you're on Ethernet. If not, you'll have to connect to Ethernet first and then find your driver, which is in the file system somewhere along the line if you go to the app center. So this is the file system I've got loaded at the moment. As you can see, loads in there. Using none of my hard drive, really, just a couple hundred meg. Nice and super. Now, it is really, really fast. Booting from the live CD, you're going to get it to boot up in around about 10 seconds. If you've got a big old save file, it'll probably take 20. But that's not too bad, is it, really? So, we go to the App Center, or App Browser even. We'll go to Connect. And basically, you scroll down, find the stuff you want to install. I mean, look, so much here. I could go on and on and on and on. So anyway, what I'm going to find is Inkscape, or Inkscape Lite. So that's a nice little quick one to install and install instantly. If I could do my alphabet, that would be. So, well, k. So I don't want that one, do I? I want to go back to that. <laughs> Up we go. Here we are. Can I sit down there? Yes, it's just down there. Somewhere right there. So, Inkscape Lite. Now, to install this, all you do, after reading all the things, of course, just click go, and off it goes. And you just either sit back or go and do something else, whichever you want to do, which is pretty awesome. Mm. So we download it, it's kept like, and it's installed. And as you can see, almost instantaneously, it's appeared in my little widget bar down the bottom. So I'll go and open them up, just to show you. One click, look at that. All there, ready for you to do your inkscape -y stuff, really. Nice. I'll open up some other stuff while we're down here. It's only a quick video, really, it's nothing big. Chromium as my main browser. It's a lot more stable than it used to be in Tiny Core. There's been some bits and bobs done to it, although you do have to install some extra fonts to get it to read properly, but it tells you that when you're installing, so that's no big deal. We'll go to the page. As you can see, this is when we're using there. Uh, 3.1. Lovely. And I really like it. It's actually quicker than the last one. And the release candidates, as a matter of fact, so to say. Yeah, that's cool. Xchat is here. Works fine, as some of you will know, because I tried it on the... Uh, on somebody's channel the other night, I think. G numeric works. Audacity, it obviously works. Yeah, of course it works. It's been around for ages. There's no reason why it shouldn't work whatsoever. Abbey Word, I won't go into it too much. Asunder for ripping your tunes. Pretty cool. I like Asunder, but that's just me. Abbey Word again. Just open it. Yeah, go on in. And quick open it, but I'm not going to say anything about it. Done videos on it, so you know how much I like it, and it's a good alternative to anything else. Really. Super. Now as you can see I've got Banshee in here as well, but I'm actually missing some dependencies. So it won't actually work at the moment, but I'll get round to doing that, because that's obviously my fault. Anyway, Tiny Core 3.1, real release, super bleeding duper, sneaky Linux going out.